Welcome back, friends, to episode 120 of Let's Play Baldur's Gate. Oh yeah, we're headed to Baldur's Gate, for once. The whole freaking game is named after it, and we've never actually been there. What a letdown. Yeah, I could go on to some ranting fanfare about what adventures await us, and what wow, what will we discover about our fate, but honestly, we're just going to go in. I don't really see a need to do anything special for it. Honestly, it's just a new place, actually. I love being here. I hardly ever get to come here. Mainly because um, I'm kind of a weenie and I never really finish any of the games I start. Oh boy, this can't be good. I serve the flaming fist! The entrance tax is six gold pieces for each party of travelers. Please announce your point of origin. I am the law! Yeah, point of origin? <laughs> the mystical land of frolicking naked imps where your every dire desire is granted by bald blubbering bugbears. You just... You have to choose that one. I don't know a single person who goes through the game doesn't choose that one. I don't like your sarcasm. If you won't cooperate, then I'll just bring you to talk with my commander. <laughs> the party has just lost six gold. Citizens, oh crap. Please step forward. First off, let me introduce myself. I'm Scar, second in command of the Flaming Fist. Though it is not necessary for you to reveal your names, please answer me this. Are you the group that was involved in the fiasco at the Nashkel Mines? Uh, <laughs> we could say, uh, nope. Or we could just be honest and say, yeah, that was us. Well, I'll have to say, you've made quite the commotion up here in Baldur's Gate. I can't really put my finger on the single source, but there have been many strange happenings going on within the city. It's been getting harder and harder for me to put trust in someone. I need outsiders to do some investigations, people with no connections to anyone within the city. Would you be interested in working for me in such a capacity? Uh, okay, well, sure. Alright then. What I'm about to tell you must be held in the strictest of confidence. Do you understand? I need you to begin an investigation of the Seven Suns trading coaster. The Seven Suns leadership has been acting strangely of late. They've been selling off valuable assets and neglecting many of their more profitable trading adventures. Considering the importance that the trading coaster holds over the economy of the city, the Grand Dukes are noticeably upset. I've gone to talk to the coaster's head, Jasso. He rudely rebuffs me, telling me to mind my own business. I've known Jasso for many years, and this isn't his usual behavior. I can start up official investigation. I can't start up an official investigation, as there is no real reason for doing so. That's why I need you. Yeah, it, um, alright, we haven't even entered the city, and looks like uh, there's already trouble brewing. Some trading official people have been acting strange and out of character, and... Well, could be anything, really. Let's see, we could say... We could say, sure, we're ready to start, but how much money we'll pay for us? Or we could just be like, uh... At the mines, and in Cloakwood, we've learned much about the goals of the Iron Throne. Yeah, we're gonna... We'll be nice to tell them about the Iron Throne. Well, that sheds new light on things. There's nothing I can really do about it now, but I'll make sure to look into it. I want you to break into the Seven Suns compound and find out what's going wrong. Use stealth in your investigation. I don't want this operation to cause too much fuss. The more... The most important person to watch out for is Jasso. Once you've found out as much as possible, report back to me at the Flaming Fist compound. I'll pay you 2,000 gold for this favor. The estate is located on the southwest side of town. I wish you all the best of luck. Remember, once you're done at the Seven Suns estate, it's imperative that you meet me at the Flaming Fist barracks, which are west, just west of the Seven Suns. Alright. Mission time. Yeah, le well, let's, let's do that then. Find out Something about the Iron Throne, direct connection, to the weird things going on. Oh gosh, it's you. Say hello, friends, to Quile. Walking alone in the Coastway Road. How smart is this? Also known as, like, Mandark from Dexter's labor Laboratory, or Laboratory, or however you want to pronounce that. Yeah, or at least it sounds extremely like him. I actually really love this guy. He's a, he's a multi-class cleric illusionist. Who is actually hmm, pretty, pretty badass of a character, if you ask me. He, uh, the first time I beat the game, I actually used this guy. But just simply for the fact that we kind of already have our party and it's kind of full already, um, we won't use him. He asks you what direction you're going. He's a gnome, and gnomes are kind of annoying, I guess, as a as a rule of thumb. So yeah, regardless of what direction you tell him you're going. He says it's the direction that he's going. We're gonna... 
We're gonna, yeah, well, oh, loutish friends, that is my direction too. Fate has crossed our paths, and we could all benefit by traveling together. It will be the classic pairing of you, the stalwart adventurers, and I, the intelligent one. How could you refuse? And eh, we're just gonna respond. How could I refuse? Watch me. Taketh thou a hike. <laughs> yeah, see, he makes fun of you, and thinks he's pretty smart. Yeah, he kind of matures by the time you get to Boulder's Gate 2. He is in Boulder's Gate 2. You all should recognize him. He's uh, Ares' uncle. I'm not going to say any more than that. Uh, for the people who don't know, he's in Baldur's Gate 2. Fortunately, you can't recruit him, but you can recruit you can recruit her. I just said I wasn't going to say anything more. Alright, that's it. I'm not saying anything more. Alright, it doesn't look like anything over here except chickens. And if I had a fireball spell, let me tell you, there would be some cooked chicken. But I don't, so congratulations. You're lucky chicken. So I guess we know our quest now. I didn't really know what we were going to be doing jumping into this episode, but it looks like we are currently on the quest to investigate the Seven Sons and see why why people are just acting weird, why they're neglecting their trade, the, the trade masters or whatever they're called, the merchant people, or not making any money with their trades and just acting bizarre. And we're working for the second in command of the Flaming Fist outpost in Baldur's Gate. Yeah, it's quite a quaint place, Baldur's Gate. Very big, actually. And oh, look, it's Elminster. Oh, there, Stay thy course a moment to indulge an old man. Good day to the young one. What a marvelous happenstance we should again cross paths, especially in such a grand city as this. Elminster, don't even talk about grand cities. I've read your books. You've gone to the city of elves. That city blows this city away. Ah, I see by thine eyes that thou have no time for my wry banter. Tis true our meeting was no accident, though I do honestly take pleasure in seeing thee again. Mm, all right. Good to see you too, Elminster. What brings you here? Oh, all citizens of the Sword Coast eventually pass through Baldur's Gate, and I knew thou wouldst as well. Forgive my continued meddling, but I believe it is warranted, especially considering the pressures thou art no doubt confronting. My pestering of thee certainly pales in comparison to the influence thou felt from others, including thine own self. Gorion raised thee as best he could, but tis hard indeed to overcome what is bred in the bone. Much more so in this case, I would imagine. Oh, he knows Gorion, or we could say, well, what is it that you wish of me? No surprise that he knows Gorion. We already knew that from that letter we got off Gorion's corpse. So let's just ask him what he wishes of us. Well, I was about to ask you the same question of thee. Thou have come quite far, and though my answers are often less than obvious, I do hope they help a little. Gorion often chided me for my obliqueness, though he was fond of a little verbal hide and seek as well. Well, we could say we tire of his games, or we could ask him about Gran. So it looks like we're gonna be forced to ask him about Gran. He was long my friend, and we talked often, though less after he settled down with thee. He was quite the traveler in his day, though he never regretted his new role as foster father. He felt a stable childhood would better prepare thee for, well, the problems that would eventually come. He cared deeply for thee. I hope this was not lost on you. Well, in this playthrough, Elminster, it wasn't. We may be a bit mischievous, but generally we're on the path of goodness. Yeah, Bagrion was weak, or we could say he was a good man, though I prefer to walk my own path. That is what we will choose. I was not suggesting thou shouldst do otherwise. Whatever the motives, independence is always a wise course to follow. My worry is that the lineage is harder to escape than most. Thou blad bad blood in thee, though Gorion did what he could to teach thee well and true. Thou have hungry blood within thee as well, and it will not let thee go without a fight. For better or for worse, what's bred in the bone will be dealt with in time. I trust thou have the will to face what is within thee. I will conquer all, whether from within or far, or I know little of what to come, but I will do what's best. We will choose the confident, arrogant choice. An attitude that will suffice, I suppose, striving to be free or refusing to be dominated. Six of one or half dozen of another. What? Six of one or half dozen? That's confusing. 
This difference is unimportant for now, though sometimes in the future such brash traits may prove to be a weakness. We shall see. For now I offer basic advice and a few names. Scar of the Flaming Fist is a good man and worth well trusting. His superior Duke Elton is also a good sort. Both are to be believed when they speak. I take my leave and I wish thee well.